Tony just got back from Titleist. Um, he went on a visit there, and Tony Titleist I'll... East, Fairhaven, New Bedford, Massachusetts, the the mothership, if you will. Yeah. So, what did you do out there when you were out there, Tony? Yeah, we did a few things. We spent a we spent a few minutes in the on the first morning with uh, with Mary Lou Bond, who's the the president of the Titleist Golf Ball Division. That was kind of a casual conversation, but we got to talk a little bit about the evolution of, of Titleist and, and, and even the relationship with my golf spy. So that was, that was, a, that was a good little chat. We took a, a tour of R and D, which was holy shit, uh, mind blowing, eye opening, scary, horrifying. I don't know. Pick your adjective. Depressing. Well, I mean, the word you told me is it pissed you off. Yeah. Yeah. We'll come back to that. I <laughs> uh, looked at kind of some, some of the facilities that very few people get to see where some of the, the parts that go into the golf ball making machines are created uh we did the ball plant number three tour where they make the pro v1 pro v1 x and the avx um went to manchester lane did a ball fitting and uh went and played some golf i have to say the the guys uh, from titleist played golf i sort of just whacked balls around would they fit uh, you, not a great ball day, fit you that's all right yeah good uh good time and really these trips are great because you Especially when it's it's very much open door and you're free to ask what you want and just have, you know, it's to a degree like somebody inviting you into their home and kind of showing you what they're really all about and who they are. So kind of really eye opening. A lot of the stuff we kind of expected to see, but when you actually see it, you're, yeah, like I said, some of it is, is pretty scary. So what'd you see? <sighs> yeah, we, we saw a lot of golf <laughs> balls that had been cut open. Um, you know, I don't. I don't know how specific I'm allowed to be, so I'm going to talk in general terms. We've got we've got some plans for how we're going to bring some of this to light in in really specific terms and and see what's what. But just just a couple of examples. You know, there there's a there's a wall where they have it's it's got to be close to a dozen golf balls, maybe more. Uh, different names on the packages, different logos, uh, different price points, and they are all the same damn golf ball. So. Essentially, depending on, on which brand you associate with, right? Because that's what you're doing. You're like, hey, uh, I guess this brand resonates with me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this ball that was white. So wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. When you say there's a a wall there with twelve balls cut open and they're all the same, these are balls that are different companies. The only the thing that's different ball. is the box and the logo. Same cover, same dimple pattern, same number layer, same materials, same damn golf ball, different box, different price, depending on, on which one you pick out. And that's that's just what's on the wall. There are other cases where, you know, some of these are sort of almost obsolete. You know, you can probably pick them up here and there. But there are, there are balls being made today, and I don't think this is any huge secret, where you're essentially – deciding that, hey, I like the logo on this particular factory ball, and so, you know, that's the one I'm going to buy. And there are situations where, you know, I think it's like, hey, if you really like this ball, you should figure out what it is and see if anybody else is selling it for the exact same, selling the exact same ball for a better price. I don't think it's, don't think it's common knowledge. I mean, at all. I don't think the average golfer goes around cutting open balls and going, oh, I, I didn't. I knew that these balls were the same or that I even knew in general terms that this golf ball and that golf ball might even be the same. I don't even think golfers have a clue about that. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here shook right now. Dude, All right, so I will give you, I'll give you a couple more examples of just scary as hell stuff. So, um, Titleist has some obviously capabilities that not everybody has and can do things that, that are hard. And like, I, I tried some things I'm down to one band aid, but, I spent the weekend peeling golf balls, and I, I literally stabbed myself three times, uh, pretty severely in a couple of cases. Um, <laughs> but they're actually so they they peel golf balls down to the core, and so there's this this one box. It was uh, hopefully it's it's not it's not a popular brand. It's it's one of those you find in a big box store, um, and they they started cutting them, and then, you know first one core was X, opened up another ball, different core, opened up another ball, different core. And when I say different, I'm talking different colors, different materials, different sizes, different diameters, uh, all in, all number in the same of layers right? in the ball. So this box had everything from a two piece, you know, just a almost range ball quality type thing, all the way up to one of a core, a core that appeared to be from a tailor made TP5. And, so hold on, back up. Shit. So this is a box that if a golfer one went box. into a store and bought this box of balls, 
he would have thought that all those balls were the same, not only brand, but the same model of golf ball, correct? Right. And, and seven how many or eight different? Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy. It was it, it looked like a random sampling, of course. So out of the out of the dozen, there were actually eight different balls. Seven or eight, I, I can't remember if it was a twelve pack or a fifteen pack, but out of it, probably there was a fifteen least, pack. Yeah, there were at least eight different golf balls in there, and and when I say different, I'm like I said, everything from a two piece to what had to be a five piece. Right. I mean, how how deep does this rabbit hole go within the book? We've only scratched the surface, and it changed a lot well, of stuff. Gonna, we're going to start a new series coming up, and um, you know, Tony's been working on it this weekend, and we're going to expand on it because the golf ball test that we did, I think, was one of the most impactful things we've ever Exa- done. Yeah, I agree. And because it opened up, you know, the Kirkland golf ball test was a domino that allowed people to look at, you know, alternative golf balls, right? Which I think is good, but a lot of those alternatives we're finding out aren't great alternatives. And the golf ball test we had shined a light, not a microscope, but a light, Mm -hmm. broad spectrum light on a lot of those issues. And there's people out there thinking we're crazy and that couldn't possibly happen. Just trust us. You're going to see a lot worse than that. And Tony's coming up with a series called Find It, Cut It. And I love this concept because Tony is going to literally randomly... Find balls on the golf course or in a store, and cut them open. Mostly on the golf course. I, I think it's important that you know we look at golf balls that people paid money for. Like we can say, hey, this is out here. Somebody bought this ball, and and here's what they actually got for their money. And Tony is uh, we basically we've built this thing to where you can see not only uh, how off center cores can be, which can cause erratic ball flights, which you know, every golfer I've told this to, the first question they ask, whether they are a scratch golfer or a 30 handicap goes, so wait a sec, like, could that be the reason why my ball is going left or right? And the answer is, it could be one of the reasons, you know? And that's yeah, shocking I, I to golfers. I think this is, this is kind of one of those things where, in, in talking to the, to the Titleist guys, we were able to validate a lot of what we saw in the test or explain, right? So, you know, one of the things we saw that, especially at high speed, right? And we want to be clear about that speed, whatever the problem is, speed amplifies it. So, you know, we saw balls that went 20, 30, 40 yards offline. And I'm talking not with roll, I'm saying landed up to 40 yards offline. And you're like hit with a robot that can't happen. Right. Because this is a golf ball that's perfectly round. And if, if one does it, they should all do it. And they're all the same. And that that's just not the case. And so, you know, at, at Titleist, they, they gave us a couple demonstrations. One of them was a ball with, I guess what you would call mismatched dimple patterns. And this is something that can sometimes happen at the factory where the, the top of the mold is mismatched with the bottom of the mold. So half the ball has a different, different dimple pattern from the other. And when you hit it, that ball, you'll see the ball go wildly offline in one direction or the other. Uh, but there won't be anything necessarily on the launch monitor that's obvious. So you won't see a change in ball speed or spin axis. What we saw in, the, uh, in, our, in our ball test were balls that would go, again, up to 40 yards offline, and there would be a corresponding shift in the spin axis. So we'd see something like a minus 10 degree tilt. And that happens when you have off-centering of the layers. So, you know, the the weighting, right? A golf ball needs to be weighted evenly on its equator. And when it's not, it spins off axis. And, you know, just like it's essentially kind of the same thing as a a side hill lie, where the ball immediately just tilts, right? It's airplane wings. So on impact, it's going to tilt to the heavy side. Think of floating it in Epsom salts is another example, right? Where you see the, the heavy side go down. Same principle when you hit a ball that, that has uneven layers, tilts down. And with that corresponding that's, spin axis tilt, you get a ball that uh, know, exactly. flies I mean, that's, that's one of the things I'm going to be doing is when I've got USM qualifying next Tuesday. And I'm going to be, whatever ball I'm playing, um, I'm going to be putting them in Epsom salts and making sure that that is one variable I can eliminate. So, Bryson DeChambeau Jr. over here. So does that's that? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Is it brand like? Does it matter the size of the the brand? Like, are these only like bad, so, you know, bo- well, big I mean, box retailer got, brands that we're seeing, or is this any, you know, not certainly, any, certainly any company? There is. I want to say. Let me let me choose my words carefully for now. Uh, certainly there are some evidence that, that some brands are better than others. And, you know, some of the balls I've cut open recently, there are, in some cases you, you do need kind of the, the template we built to see some of it. Other cases you're like, holy shit, how did that get out of that We can't say anything um, about and, and here's the right thing, now. like, look, Titleist has its, 
story, right? Titleist, Titleist says, hey, we have the highest quality in in the ball industry. And, you know, we're, we're going to cut open Titleist balls, too. We're going to look at everything. Titleist philosophy is that it is not possible to inspect quality into your product, right? Quality has to be part of every process, every step of the long, along the way. You can't just get to the end and hope that you can pull out the and let me just now. And let me just put that in perspective, bringing it smaller scale, right? If you don't have control of the process, which most of these- Every come, step of the process. Every step, every step. But what if you don't even have the plant to make your own balls? You are not watching that process every step. So the less control you have of your process, the less control you have of the quality of your golf ball. And yeah, or that's, quality that's of whatever you have. That's reasonably true probably for everything, right? The, the further you are removed from, from whatever it is, the less control you have over that situation. And the fact of the matter is that- you know, there, there are not every golf company owns its own factories. Not every golf company controls every aspect of, of how a ball gets made within those factories to a degree, right? You know, some source, a greater percentage of the, the materials, that sort of thing versus kind of mixing the formulations on site. So there's just, there's, there's just tremendous variety in the ball market in terms of, of what the brands actually control. And we, we haven't proven that yet. You know, certainly we, we saw some things in our testing where we're like, mm, that's that's not good. Uh, but like I said, find it, cut it. We're going to do a lot more at, at taking a look at what's inside the golf balls that people are buying. And and we are I'm going to do it now. and We're going to do it with every episode. We're going to encourage guys to do the same thing. Cut the balls open. I mean, a PVC cutter from Home Depot is 15 bucks. And it, it's alarming how much of what is sometimes wrong with a golf ball is visible to the naked eye. So, you know, if you can clearly see a core is off center or you can clearly see that, that a cover is thicker on one side than the other, those are going to have performance implications. There's no doubt about that. So well, that's what I was going to say. So Tony's going to start a series called find it, cut it. I and mean, I think it's going to be eye opening to all golfers for one, but I think we're going to build a list of the things we find and how each one of those things can potentially affect your performance and as you can see tony has cut open a plethora of balls already and he's going to co cut open a, a ton more to educate consumers on what's going on inside the golf ball and how it affects uh, your game and we've already heard we already know a list the list is already being built right and the list will continue to be built um i would say this tony like what are the most alarming things that you've seen either at titleist or by cutting open balls yourself so far? Well, certainly at Titleist, any, any time you have a box of balls that has eight different, uh, <laughs> eight different models with the same logo, that's, that's going to be the scariest thing I think you've ever, you're ever going to see. Because, I mean, we, we talked about this before, right? Earlier in the segment, we talked about, hey, let, let, maybe don't swap your equipment all the time. The same thing goes for the golf ball, right? That golf ball needs to be the same. Imagine whether it's a because you're changing balls or you're you're playing a ball model that's inconsistent it's if i said hey you know i'm you have whatever your distance is say 160 and that's a 7 iron for you but but on every shot or four times around i made you change your 7 iron i mean how are you going to get consistent results with that right your lofts are going to be different everything's going to be it's just an added variable that's not needed right find right. find a consistent variable a good ball that's quality ball and stick you know, it was one of our take, biggest takeaways from the golf ball test. We don't care what ball you necessarily play. I mean, I kind of do. But more importantly, play the same ball. Every hole, every shot, every putt. And make sure the yeah, manufacturer that's creating the same ball is putting and, the and same ball in the box. Yeah, exactly. Find a ball that the manufacturer can make consistently. Same ball over and over again with the cores in the middle. Um, so you asked what <laughs> I've seen. I've got balls here where... The cores are visibly off center. You're like, holy shit! How did that get out of the factory? How it are looks, you? And you've of, got ones oh, with swirls on the cores. Yeah, I was going to say. Right. Yeah, well, so you've got, you look at the you look at the cores, and it's uh, and it's all swirly. What does that and, mean? And that would be fine, right? If if that was the design of the ball, but you look at you look at three more of the Boy, same right. model, and not only is every core it's formulation different. a slightly different color, which meaning you know there there's something inconsistent in the recipe but when you see swirls in your core like that it means they didn't mix it properly so and if you, you know, see imagine, if you see rubber a baker, tires or steel belts and well the, that was that was one from titleist where, that's what i was gonna say um, again this is this is one where you have several 
you know, brands logos being being put on a ball and the ball. I mean, these are cheap balls. These are balls that hopefully anybody watching this knows not to buy anyway. Um, but so essentially the insides, the, the cores are made. It's a two piece ball. Cores are made from recycled tire rubber. And in some cases, the Titleist guys told us they actually found portions of like the steel belt from the tire. OK, so <laughs> just, just still think about just that. In the ball. Think about that for a second. When you wear what your tread down. On? Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly. what is going on with the what? Yeah, so I, I mean, I don't, I don't know it. if I've got I don't know if I've got steel belts in this one, but you know, this is kind of kind of what we're dealing so, with. So, so those right those like white dots could be steel. Belt yeah, I mean, and, and again, some of these you see this kind of this could be this cream. pattern quite a bit. Um, I don't know, let me, Tell that to let me just grab one more. This will this like, one's kind of interesting. Oh! I don't know I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not in. From you know this type of angle we're dealing with, but here's a ball from a, a oh, we an can exceptionally a popular bit. model, which is wildly off center. Uh, so wait, that's that's yeah. not the one that we covered. Well, listen, you know, bigger picture. Spoiler alert: just so bad. golf balls on the inside aren't what you think. We're gonna you know find them, cut them open, and tell you what we found, and also how it affects your game. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this because seriously, this could be bigger than it, the golf ball test. I think I'm. Be. I am I'm excited about it. I think it's it's one of my few good ideas. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I'm absolutely uh, horrified about what I might find. And I want to be I'm... clear: like we're we're going to cut it all open. Like I said, we we've, we've talked about. We think there are brands that have quality control issues. Titleist says that they make the the tightest quality, you know, consistent ball. We're going to cut theirs open. We're going to see what we find. Just about anything. If we find something weird, we'll cut that open too. But. Uh, mostly we want to concentrate on newer models from top manufacturers or popular direct cons to consumer brands. Who knows? Maybe we'll find two that are exactly the same with a different logo. Uh, like I'm I said, so, it's going to be so really, really, really interesting. So uh, I mean, um, just some points to reiterate. P play the same ball. Play a quality ball. And if you get the opportunity, get fit for a golf ball. Um, Wait, before we... Which, you know, I did as well while I was at Titleist. And yeah, what, what do they fit really you with? Interesting. What's that? What do they fit you with? <laughs> this is this is textbook tony uh for sure like this is everywhere i go this kind of thing happens so uh i've, I've I know what's coming to, yeah so i'm 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 a high spin player to begin with uh a dynamic loft machine Can mostly because i probably have shit wrist conditions like i know what it is uh their first recommendation was maybe go get a lesson which is, <laughs> is not a bad idea so <laughs> Oh, Did you tell him you already went to the Martin Chuck School of Golf? And it didn't fix yeah, you. Yeah, and, you know, and I and I did improve. I just need to improve more. I need so to they so Chuck all right. Wait, so they couldn't just, fit you for so a ball. They couldn't fit you up. <laughs> so <laughs> they couldn't so fit we you. We talked about this. So uh, um, no I was way. definitely too high spin for the Pro V One X. Pro V One, uh, you know, they said I might want to look at AVX, but I again feel does matter to a degree, right? Um, as much as we like to to say just that it shouldn't. They couldn't fit you for uh, a ball. So I, I, for me, AVX is like putting mashed medical. potatoes. So what they actually fit me into is a left dash Pro V One X, which is uh, a one of their one of a handful of tour models that they offer to to the guys. It's sort of a best described as a lower spinning Pro V One X. So it's a little firmer, a little faster, but a, than, did they uh, did they give you these? They they sent me home with a, about a dozen and said, hey, try them on the course. And that's the other thing too. So part of the Essentially, what Titleist gives you is a recommendation. They don't say, hey, play this ball. This is absolutely it. No questions asked. Don't look at anything else. Just play this blindly. They say, hey, based on the numbers that we see, a combination of half wedge shots, seven iron shots, and driver performance, we think this is going to be the ball that's best for you now. Now, typically, they only fit for AVX, Pro V1, and Pro V1X because the position, and this is another point I think that's really interesting to make, is that Unless your primary concern is money, if you're if you're performance focused, unless you're literally trying to pinch every penny and you don't care about the performance of your golf ball, you shouldn't be playing a, a, a two piece golf ball. You, That's a great point. If you so, care, if you're serious about performance, three, four piece, whatever, you're a thing ball. So all right, two quick things before Pro V one X, Pro V one, and AVX, and I ended up in a tour model pro v1 left dash pro v1 x excuse me left dash which they say is probably a fit for about five percent of golfers so all right before we move special. before we move on a couple things special is a good word that's, that's a nice word 
A couple quick things before we move on. If you haven't seen the golf ball test we did, I encourage you to go on there and check it out. Uh, it's at the very top banner of the website. You can find the golf ball results. And two, Tony brought up a good point. So we tested tour model golf balls. And we've gotten a lot of questions on, hey, can you guys do you know, a non-tour model ball test? And the reason we selected a tour model ball test is because everyone that we consulted with that are golf ball experts before we ran the test said, basically, if you care about performance, don't buy a cheap golf ball mm -hmm. because there is no performance benefit. So no need hey, to let really me, test uh, them. Let me interject and, something real quick, Adam. So the other sort of reason that gets pushed for, for playing a two-piece ball or I guess what you would call a, a closer to premium two-piece ball is the idea of shot shapes per, uh, correction, right? These balls spin less off the driver, and so you're more likely to find the fairway. The Titleist position, and it, to a large degree, it, it does bear out in the numbers. If you look at kind of a, a premium tour ball and a two-piece ball designed for shot shape correction through reduced spin, the spin reduction is not super significant. It's just a, a two, 300 RPM off the driver. And what you give up off irons and around the green, the argument is, look, that, that tiny bit of improvement you get off the driver isn't worth what you lose around the green and on approach shots where you're going to hit the overwhelming majority of, of your shots. And, you know, a guy like me, especially Dean Snell's talked about this as well. Your average golfer who misses greens with, with greater regularity than he hits them, you know, to, to get the performance off wedges and irons is far, far more important that to get the spin where you need it than to sort of give it up to, to well, correct the shot. Probably by a small degree more driver. impactful for the average golfer, too, is they buy them for a price point. And now there really is no reason to do that anymore because there are tour quality golf balls being sold for the price that these yeah. affordable golf ball, two piece golf balls were being sold for. So there's really no reason that I can see to test them or recommend them to any golfer, except for maybe some very small instances or percentages, right? So why? You yeah, know, and, uh, anecdotally, when we, the, we, me, anyway, the stuff that I've cut open, especially if you're, if you're really <laughs> trying to pinch pennies, like the two piece balls, that's where I really see sort of that, that uneven cover stuff. So well, if you're trying to pinch that yeah. many pennies, I would advise to just go buy the, re you know, the balls that are recycled at the store and that are Lake high balls. quality, tour quality golf balls. Well, that don't are cheaper. Well, uh, so you could go buy a Kirkland dozen used, for a dollar used, ball. used versus recycled. That's what I'd say. I'd say you're better off with a used ball than a recycled refinish. That's true. Because yeah, when you're when you start, this is something we talked about as well. When you you start spraying or refinishing, that's adding true. paint, that's a way to create unevenness in your yeah. dimple depths. And that's true. a good point. Yeah. So you know, buyer beware with the recycled balls. I forgot about that. A lot of them are resprayed and repainted, which you know, as Tony just told you, no by cutting, bueno. by cutting open balls, just a little bit of more weight on one side of a ball can totally impact it uh, how it flies in the air. So Tony. For golfers out there right now, what can they do minus going out there buying balls and chopping money up, basically? What do you recommend, you know, the check and go or the uh, Epsom salt where they can check these on their own, correct? Yeah, yeah. You can get a check go, check go pro or just the old method of floating a ball in Epsom salt. And, you know, basically what that finds is the identifies the heavy side of a golf ball. And so if you you know, it, with Epsom salt, it's particularly revealing, right? So the, the more sort of out of balance the ball is, the faster it will return to the same mm -hmm. spot where if it's relatively well balanced, you get kind of yeah, keep spinning pretty much. Yeah. Versus, yeah. Um, so Epsom salts work. Check GoPro if you want to draw a line on it. That, that can help as well. I've done that for years. But, I mean, it, at the end of the day, like, shouldn't come to that, right? Because you're paying... Shouldn't have to. If you're paying for a good ball, you're paying three, four, in some cases, you know, more than $4. All right, give me the three ball top ball. Give me the three type brands and you think, uh, in your opinion, of uh, quality control. Uh, based on testing, based on what I've been told, based on what I've heard from multiple sources in the industry, uh, look, Titleist, Shrix on Bridgestone. That's, like, honestly, at this point, knowing what I know, having seen what I've seen, and you'd you'd be hard shit, pressed folks. to convince me to, to, cause again, you're going to get similar performance from other brands. Although yes, you know, one once, you, right. Maybe not the next time. So this and is, so, yeah, it becomes, it, it becomes not only, Hey, does this ball have the spe performance specification that I'm looking for, but Hey, are all the ones in this box the same? Well, let Do me I just ask you a question. If you want to hit it 175 yards 
and you know that your <laughs> iron hits at 175 and one time that goes 165 and it had nothing to do with your swing that's not or 10 yards offline that's whatever, not something right? you would want in your game right that added variable yeah. so play a ball that's consistent that goes consistent distances consistent ball flights or else you're just adding an unneeded variable yeah. to a game that's already hard as shit right yeah i mean it's it's that's that's the secret to golf to some degree, right? Is eliminating all the variables that you possibly can. So Bingo. start by playing the same ball every time because the ball is a can be a huge variable. Sounds like common and sense, then, right? And then pick a brand and model that is consistent too, so there aren't you don't have multiple variables within the same box. All right, before we move on, last thing I want to say: don't buy golf balls with recycled tires in the middle. They're going to hurt your game. 